All right, so for this problem, we're looking for the smallest diameter that can be used. We are given that we have a tensile load P, which is equal to nine kilonewtons. We are also given that we have a length of 50 meters, and I'm gonna go ahead and convert that into millimeters, which is going to be 50,000 millimeters. We are also given the modulus of elasticity E, which is 200 gigapascals. And then we have two criteria that must be met here. So the first one being that the normal stress must not exceed 150 megapascals. And our second criteria is that the increase in length of the wire must not exceed 25 millimeters. So that's just going to mean that the deformation in this wire must be less than 25 millimeters, less than or equal to. And so we're going to really have to look at two different scenarios here, one being the um, normal stress scenario and one being the uh, deformation scenario and we're going to have to solve for a diameter in both of these cases and then take one of these diameters so let's go ahead and start with our first case which is that the normal stress must not exceed 150 megapascals and so let's see here we have that the formula for stress is equal to p over a and if we rearrange this, we can get that our A is equal to P over the stress. And we have P, both P and the stress. So our force P is 9 kilonewtons. And the stress is 150 megapascals. Um, and I'm going to go ahead and convert that into gigapascals here. 0 0.15 gigapascals. And then solving for the area we get that the area is equal to 60 millimeters squared. And then remember when we have a wire, the formula for area is pi d squared over four. And so rearranging for uh, the d here, we get that the diameter is four a over pi. And then we can just plug in our values that we got and solve here. And so in this case, we get that the diameter is equal to 8.74 millimeters. And then we have our second case, which we're going to look at now, which is when the deformation cannot exceed 25 millimeters. And so for this case, we're going to look at the deformation formula, which is that the deformation is equal to PL over AE. And then we can rearrange this to solve for area, which is where we're going to find the diameter from. And we have both PL, the deformation, and the mod modulus of elasticity. So we can actually go ahead and solve for the area in this case. And we're going to plug in all our values. So for P, we got 9 kilonewtons. For the total length, we got 50,000 millimeters. For the deformation, 25 millimeters. And then for the modulus of elasticity, 200 gigapascals. And then solving for the area, we get that the area is equal to 90 millimeters squared. And now we're going to do the same thing we did before, where we need to solve using this formula, A equals pi d squared over 4. So solving for the diameter, we get that the diameter is equal to the square root of 4A over pi. And we're just going to plug in everything we know into this formula, the area being 90 millimeters squared. And then solving for this, we get that the diameter in this case is equal to 10.70 millimeters. And so now looking at these two diameter values that we got, it, we're asked for the, I believe we're asked for the smallest diameter. Yes, we're asked for the smallest diameter. So now that we've tested both of these cases, we know that each of these diameters will cause failure in uh, each of these cases, each of these different cases. So obviously, if we had a diameter that was 8.74 millimeters, it would cause failure in both cases. If we had a diameter that was 10.7 millimeters, it would only cause failure in case two. So the smallest diameter we can take is 10.7 because this is the largest diameter that we solve for that will cause failure. So the smallest diameter that can be possibly be used without causing any failure would be 10.7 millimeters. So this is going to be our answer in this case. And that's it for this problem.